All right, so we're going to do a simple uh, Windows file server using Alpine Linux. Now, this is um, this is something that's not documented in their wiki, but it's fairly easy to set up, uh, very similar to their tutorial for the NFS server. So we're just going to accept the default, set up a 256 meg virtual machine, 8 gig disk, uh, and then we're going to insert the Alpine install disk, and we're going to set the networking to bridged. Go ahead and start that. Go ahead and hit enter. The boot menu there. And it'll quickly go ahead and, and boot into the uh, login prompt. Then you log in as root with no password, and you run setup Alpine, which will prompt you for some pieces of information about how to configure your system. So this first question is which keyboard? Ours is US. We have the US variant. We're going to set our host name to Alpine. We're going to configure e the E0 interface with DHCP, no manual configuration. Then we're going to put in a password for our root user. Set my time zone to Mountain Standard, no proxy. Uh, I'm going to set a mirror that I know to be good, which is Dallas Fort Worth. Reinstall the OpenSSH server and the Crony NTP client. Uh, I found that the defaults are usually pretty good. Then we're going to tell it we want to install on our SDA1 and we want to do sys, which is a traditional install onto that disk and then confirm and we'll go ahead and create our partition and install our system. And this doesn't take very long. Even on the slow mirror, it still happens in just a minute or two. Obviously, with it, if you have larger disks or uh, disk encryption or things like that, it may take longer. Uh, so then after it, it, it does its thing on the disk, uh, it's going to ask us to power the machine off. So there we go. We're going to power off and then eject the disk. And so we go to storage. We're going to eject our CD. And then we're going to boot up our machine again, which is completely installed already. It's very fast. Uh, it's very small, and also one of the uh, it's becoming popular as a base for Docker containers because of its simplicity and its speed and its small size. So, in a second here, we'll be booted into Alpine to login prompt. We'll log in with the root user that we created. Now, what we can do is begin uh, our configuration. So, the APK command is for adding packages, and there's two packages that we need to grab. We need to grab Samba, which is the Samba server, and Samba Common Tools, which provides the SMB password command that we need to set up users to be able to access Samba. Okay, so that's done. Now we're going to create our mount point uh, that we're going to share, and we're going to give it some open permissions. Now, you may want to to go lock that down a little bit more. I'm just trying to show you how to get it to work. Uh, this is not really a, a production setup. It's just to show you how to get things up and running. So there's two sections we need. We need global and we need the one uh, for our share name. Now this one storage is going to be uh, because my share is going to be called storage. So within global, you need to set your work group. Uh, and then I don't know if these two are necessary or not, but uh, I read that it's it's recommended to set your two character sets so that it can properly write things between Unix systems and Windows. Uh, and then I'm going to force it to use my KC user, which I'll create in a second. Now, I want this share to be browsable. I want it to be writable. And I want to set the path to media storage. Okay, so that's all we need right now. Then we add the KC user, giving it a password, 
and then we do the SMB password tag A, which tells it to add a Samba user with that name. The passwords do want to match. Now we're going to add Samba to our default run level so that when we boot it starts the service. And we start the service and now we should be able to open Finder and connect to our share that we just created. Uh, so we create a folder real quick and then you should see that folder. And then if we write something, uh, should I just try it here? And there you go. Everything is working. Simple as that.